Hello and welcome to our last episode of Agile TD Mondays before the summer break. Today with Vittoria Maneska. But before she can tell you more about Gherkin language, please register for the Agile Testing Days 2017 this November in Potsdam. You can ask some of our Agile TD Monday speakers and all of our Agile TD speakers holds in the belly. Go to agiletestingdays.com and register now. And now to you, Vicky. Hi, everyone. Um, and thank you, Zubina, for the nice introduction. Uh, let's share my screen. Um, start sharing. Okay, so thanks again, Sabina, for the nice introduction. And as Sabina already mentioned, so uh, today I would like to talk about how, um, how in my team we implemented the Gherkin language and all the experience we have with the given one then format used in creating automation tests. Um, I'm Vicky, so something about me. I'm Vicky and I'm an adventurous in uh, pioneer and learning agility. I'm working as a tester in LifeWatch Macedonia and I also want to see myself as a leader of change. You can find me on Twitter by Vicky uh, down slash Iki and as well, uh, as Bina mentioned, I hope to see you this year on Agile Testing Days. I will be a speaker there and I hope that we will be able to talk and discuss more questions regarding the Gherkin language and BDD and all the things that I will talk during the presentation and even a lot more. So if you haven't used the early bird ticket, then this is your chance to do it. So uh, what will be, so my requirement for this talk uh, will be kind of, will be to, given we had an, an interesting experience using Gherkin language, when I share our outcomes in a talk on Agile Testing Mondays, then the listeners will hear about our learning points and get inspired to make an action. So this is what I hope that on the end of this uh, presentation will, will happen. How we'll go, what's going to be our agenda for this talk? Um, I'm going to talk about how we started, um, how we'll actually implement it or try to, we are trying to implement Gherkin language in my team. Um, what are, what we're, uh, what were our learning points? Uh, where are we now? And some words of wisdom just for the end of the slides. So how we started um, in the, um, in the company that I'm working now, uh, we have we have formed an automation team, team who was asked to automate the manual UI tests that were done for the previous phase that was already developed and it was in production. And after they done with the, the first phase of development and they have executed for the first time, I was assigned to review the results that they have, um, they have accomplished just to verify the, the results if we have, uh, so if they are, if everything is correct. So when I started reading about, when I started to read the, the results, I kind of noticed that the use of Gherkin language as from my pe previous reading and in, as well in the previous Agile testing conference, we also talked a lot about behavior driven development and using the given one then. So while I start to, to read these test cases, I just kind of find out that the girl king language was misused. Uh, so there were a lot of things that I could find that they can be improved. So in this point, I was having two options. One option was to continue and to concentrate on the results that were uh, in the test cases so I can verify if, they, if the results are okay or not. And the second option was for me to challenge myself to try to uh, learn more about Gherkin language and try to implement them in the right way. So of course I chose the second option because it was kind of screaming learning and challenge to have a new experience and as well to make it to use it in the right way. So um, having this in mind, I started to research because I didn't want to just to go to my colleague and say, oh, you know, this is not how it's supposed to be implemented. Um, so I wanted to find out more. So not just to tell them, you know, this is not good 
and you didn't implement it good, but also I wanted to find a way how can we make it together to work in the right way. So I started exploring more about given when then, and from all the um, readings and everything what I have found, I've kind of draw this image that has for me the best describe how can we easily implement given when then. So in the given we will put all the parameters that uh, are supposed to be complete, for example if we have all the surroundings or the parameters that are needed for, for the test, we'll have all our actions in the when in the when sentence and as well all our expected outcomes will be set in then. So if we follow the image, so given we have some, radio, some button, once it's clicked, so the action will be clicking, it will go green, which is the result or the, action, the expected outcome. Also, while exploring and uh, reading more um, about the, uh, this, the approach of um, having given when then in writing test cases, I have come on this article which was written by Goiko and I kind of, I, I'm not, I'm not a really big fan of rules and um, things that kind of are uh, not stopping you but kind of giving you some borders but what I have found out that at the beginning where when you don't know where you're going or you're trying to implement something, these guidelines can, can be used as a guidelines that so you know where, so you know, take a good direction and so you can, as well, you can verify yourself or check if you're on the right way. Once you have mastered the basics, then you can play and experiment another maybe level. But at the beginning is good that you, that at least for me, was good to follow some guidelines and some rules. So at the beginning to start with these rules and afterwards you will see what we actually upgraded or changed in this while this talk. So what are the, so what Goik is suggesting in his article or how to make it work was to use the past tense for given close, for given sentence, to use present for when and future tense for then sentence, to in the given to state all the preconditions and parameters, in then to state postcondition and ex expectations, uh, to use uh, passive for given and then because they should describe the values, to use when to be when to be active, so it should it describe some action and to try to have only one when in by for one scenario. So having read uh, articles, having had a little bit more knowledge while reading, I felt more comfortable to approach a colleague of mine and to kind of elaborate with her the, the test cases that were already automated using working language. So first what I did, I shared the articles that I found it useful regarding given when then, so she could also like read more in details what uh, what was not okay, actually what can, what what was, what can be, what can, ah, sorry, <laughs> what we can improve in the test cases that were already written. And while we started to analyze the test cases that were already written, we actually found out that we had a lot of whens in the scenario, as you could see in the previous slides. Uh, it was unclear what was our outcome because we had a lot of thens, so there was a lot of very, so we didn't actually know in which case or what was concretely the outcome that we are expecting if it's working or not. Um, there were a lot of preconditions repeating in every, in every test case, which for example, the logging in or things that, ca that could be excluded and set aside from every test case, they were implemented. So we actually find out kind of while elaborating, we saw things that we can improve. So what we did next is we, as we read and agree that we will kind of explore more and we knew what was supposed to be implemented, so we agreed that we will sit together and for the, another, for the second phase that was, is in development now, that we agreed that we will sit together and we will create the first test together with given when then scenarios and define a, small, a smoke test set that it can be run easily and it will be used for all the other bills that will be used in the second phase that is in, in development. Um, so 
as we so what what are the things that so as we start implementing as I, as I told you at the beginning we started together then the, my colleague started to write the hers uh, she wrote some of the scenario I wrote the other scenarios and what are the things that we learned on the way or um, that we found actually some of the things that we learned were things that were kind of on the way difficult to to master or we were finding some difficulties while implementing them first of all was trying to um, writing the scenario name and the den condition so at the beginning we we were having we, was, we were having some struggles in this um, putting putting the name of the scenario and what was supposed to be the then outcome we were kind of mixing not mixing them but for example we will for example uh, try to uh, very so the scenario will say to verify that the enrollment was submitted or something like that and then the message we will also put in the then the, in the then condition to be to verify the message that is displayed which was not in the name so one thing that we kind of come to our learning point is that we should put the the that we should try the scenario name to contain the then condition in that case we will know that this is the scenario that we have written and this is what our outcome is supposed to be so if this scenario is passed then we know that this outcome is uh, successfully actually built so for example um if our scenario was submitted proposal will be displayed in proposal grids the scenario will go that given this user has submitted a proposal when the user navigates to proposal grid and search for proposal name then the new submitted proposal will this will be displayed in the grid so you could see that in the scenario name we also have we it contains the then condition this is something that uh, this um, our learning points that I'm going to share are something that we found it useful during our implementation it doesn't have to mean that it's a rule and you have to use it but it's something that maybe you can try it out by yourself and maybe have the same um, use it maybe it will be useful for you as well the next thing that we um, find out or that um, we um, also in the, in the way when when we were reading all the articles we read that we should not um, go in details of how to, not not to have the whole user experience so not to go everywhere as the user was supposed to go but in our case maybe because we were having um, scenarios which were longer and were um, needed for the user to go to f a few pages uh, they found it that actually defining the the steps but just the uh, the the required and the the ones that are um, needed for that scenario to be distinguished were helping us in reproducing the scenario manually so now when we are running the scenarios it's very it's very easier to if it, the scenario is not passed it's very easy to go through and see in which step has exactly failed felt and so we can go and reproduce and create a bug um, so for example this is uh, the scenario so this is an example for one scenario so new subscribe user will see confirmation message with uh, article preferences so given the user is on subscribe page when the user inserts all the required fields and navigates to article preferences and select three types of articles and clicks on submit button then confirmation message with selected article types will be displayed this scenario also can be written without the um, the steps in so without uh, the navigating to article selecting types so the user can just submit button can click on submit button and very when we can verify that the message will contain the articles but we'll kind of for us in execution has this uh, way of implementing was much useful to know where, which steps we have done so this is something that we find it useful it might not be useful in all the cases but in in ours was very useful another thing is simplicity is the answer to all our plot problems we we tend most of our i think that this is uh, I, I, example i have it i usually tend to complicate things so a nice the uh, thing when you're working with somebody else is just to point you out when you're just too complicated in things and then you have to make it simple so whenever you think about so what what we also read it was that 
given when then should be very simple and should stimulate com, com, should stimulate in discussion so as simple as you are making them that's how you will um, uh, elaborate and have more ideas come out but they can be divided and put in other given when then scenarios so given when then should follow just one outcome so not do not um, stress too much so once you start overthinking it then that's the point where we stopped and we think and we took the first option and then we wrote as well the other one just as um, another side uh, scenarios that can be implemented another thing is ask for feedback so ask your colleagues once you start implementing or any other i guess asking for feed, feedback is always a uh, always a great uh, um, approach in everything that you're doing because while asking for feedback you're giving your chance to learn something new to see a different perspective and to have a second opinion on something else most of the times when me and my colleagues started implementing things so we'll start with something and then another one will read it and realize something else so we will kind of yeah like yeah right you're right and then we'll go back and make it even easier so Receiving a, so seeing the having a second opinion for something can make them more similar and can make them more simpler and as well give you a chance to to learn something new. Um, so where are we now? Um, at this point, we are um, executing the uh, small smoke test that we created, the automatic smoke test. We are reviewing the results and the reports, um, and also we are about to start working on our results and actually on the on the reports, just to make them more in a way user friendly for everybody that will see the reports that can easily identify and see what was um, successful and what was not successful. And as well, a colleague of mine who is actually working on the automation of the test cases, she's also refactoring and optimizing the code so they can be run faster and so we can put them in the build and so everything will go more, much smoother. Um, so what I wanted to, um, to achieve with this um, talk is actually to make you or to inspire you to make an action. Um, if you had any, so if you were thinking about something that you didn't know if you would like to, if you, if you, if you were not sure if you would like to implement it or not, if it was okay or not, and uh, just struggling if somebody will think that it's a good idea or not, I will say don't be shy and uh, put yourself in action and find yourself a buddy. So don't be a solo player, find a colleague of yours that can, be, can support your idea, but before that, read more and explore more about the new approach that you would like to take. Share your idea with a colleague, start um, experiencing, start trying try to use it. And then what I've seen is, well, usually when you try to, well, after you read a lot of uh, articles or see how other people have implemented, once you are trying by, by yourself, you will actually find out that the same things might happen to you. So you will kind of uh, have this learning, you know, lear learning curve um, regarding getting more, more experience. So, um, so I hope that this uh, positive ex example, as I, sell, as I said, will motivate you to make an action and that will uh, help you to create something, something new. So use this vacation. I'm also very happy that uh, uh, as the, I'm the last uh, uh, presenter from the series of Agile Testing uh, Mondays. And that uh, you will have a break. That means that you will maybe have time to think about all the actions that you would like to take and use the uh, break to charge your batteries and come back to work with more energy and more um, power to make some action. If I'm, uh, Linda Rising at the beginning, which ha she had the, the first talk, and she was talking about New Year's resolution. So I guess if you didn't achieve to do your resolution till now, I guess this is the second half where you will char charge your batteries and try again to, to, make, a, to make a new, um, a new movement. Um, I will end up this uh, presentation which, uh, with a saying from David Peterson, staying with your comfort zone is a good way to prepare for today, but it's a terrible way to prepare for tomorrow. Um, 
as I previously said, I will be on Agile testing days. Um, feel free to ask me for a discount, and I'm hope to see you there so we can discuss more in details all the, the BDD implementation. And given when then, and sh I will share with you what we actually till till where we got in while uh, the Agile testing days conference. Um, you will see the all the links that I think that are useful for that I used while preparing for this talk, and I hope that they will be useful for you as well while you will implement given when then. Thank you, Wiki. This was uh, very nice. Uh, I have actually one question. Um, it is, uh, you said at the beginning that you can only have one when for a scenario. Can you tell me why? But first, stop sharing your mm -hmm. screen. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> uh, let me just find the, uh, okay. So can you see me again? <laughs> yeah. um, so why can you have only one when? Because that's the, that's the action that we will test against. So we will have one, we should have one action and one outcome from the action. So what is, so we are testing the action and actually, what, it should be one outcome from the action that we are talking. Okay. So as an okay. outcome of the actions that we will take. So if we have uh, more outcomes, we have to split like yes. the test if, case and then... Yeah, if you have, for example, if, if you're trying to, as I said, like a very simple scenario, it's like sometimes we have the confirmation message and as well to verify if we have, for example, created a new user or send an email so if we so these are all different scenarios so one scenario can be to verify that the success message will be displayed to the user another scenario will be that the message that uh, user will be displayed in some grid another scenario will be to verify that an email has been sent or to verify that uh, email that the user was immediately logged in after he was created so this all of this will be should be actually a different scenarios. So we can, so once they are run, you will know if if it fails. You will know concretely in concretely in what will fail. So if it's the message, the scenario that failed, you will know that the message is not display. If it's um, because of the uh, I don't know if it's not found in the grid, then you will know that okay. The some if we put it one by one, then you will know what was passed and what's not. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, thank you for the clarification. So um, goodbye to you. Thank you for your talk. Um, see you at the Agile Testing Days. For those of you who haven't, who haven't registered, please do it now. Yes, do it as um, I, <laughs> I see you all in uh, September when we will continue with Agile TD Mondays. Our speaker after the summer break will be Aaron Dutta. You can uh, see his talk on the Agile Testing Days webpage uh, and the schedule. And, um, I see you there, Vicky, and glad you. <laughs> I'm glad that you joined me today and that you sweetened my last day at work before the summer break. Thank you. Have a very, very nice summer break and see you in November on Agile Testing Days. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.